Welcome, welcome to Nerd HQ, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I like this. It's an intimate room, it's small. No empty seats in the front. Just everybody get, I like that. Ooh, God, you guys are good. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have uh, a little panel here. We're gonna have uh, you guys asking some questions. The way we're gonna do that is, we're gonna have you put up your hand. One of our lovely and talented staff members on the side are gonna give you a microphone. Once you have a microphone, and someone's finished answering a question over here, you're gonna hold your microphone up, they're gonna pick you, and then you're gonna give us your question. In the meantime, take as many pictures as you like. We're gonna ask that you do no flash photography and no video. Don't worry, the video's taken care of by some amazingly talented cameramen. Thank you, gentlemen, ladies. <laughs> With what I will tell you is some pretty spanky, technologically advanced equipment. <laughs> Afterwards, we're gonna have you stay seated, and the ushers will have you stand row by row and get you out of here in a nice, calm order. Unless there's a fire, in which case, right over the railing, guys, these are just curtains. <laughs> These are just curtains, they will not stop you. I'll be tucking a chair right through there. <laughs> Anybody who thinks they can survive the fall, you're with me. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am a big fan of what these people have done. They've accomplished a great deal. Please welcome with me, in no particular order, the Thrilling Adventure Hour. <laughs> ben Acker, Ben Blacker, Paul Tompkins, John DiMaggio, Josh Molina, Mark Evan Jackson, Mark McGlarty, Greg Bukowski, Hal Lubin, Annie Savage, Aaron Ginsberg, and Autumn Reese. <laughs> welcome, 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 you guys. Thank How you. are you? Great. Great. Good. All of you? All of you good? Is, is, is this, this live? So good. Is this okay. live? Is this live? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ben Acker, Ben Blacker, please stand up. Yeah. Or do you want us to go? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest right now. I don't know which one is which. Listen, here I've, we've we've been I've trying to get. I've never known. This. I don't want to know. No, we've been trying to get this out there. You can call each of us Ben. We'll respond to it. You don't need to know yeah. which is which. We'll keep track. I've kind of learned you're synonymous. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't matter which one of you I'm talking to. No. All that matters is where I look. Right. There or there. You've created, so some of these people have seen the Thrilling Adventure Hour, have yes. I? Has anybody here only ever heard the Thrilling Adventure Hour? Okay, right? What was it that made you say, you know what we need to do? <laughs> Old timey radio show. Whose idea was that? Well, we saw the way that media was going, and we said, backwards is the, <laughs> the correct way to do it. Uh, no, I mean, we've told the story uh, before, but we wrote a feature screenplay of Sparks Nevada, Marshall on Mars. We had a bunch of actors over to, uh, to read it so we could hear it, and the reading was so much fun. Uh, as good as the script was, the reading was awesome. And the script was really good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we said there, there must be a way to exploit our friends and get them in front of an audience and have people come out and see this thing. And we love genre stuff. We love space westerns, no offense. And we love, um, you know, supernatural stuff. And uh, so we like, it, it just all kind of made sense to use the radio conceit. And that also makes it easy for the actors who are all working actors to come and not have to memorize lines. Or at least easy. What? To you guys don't memorize your lines? <laughs> You're a professional. Well, yeah, I am, but. Wow. Annie, we'll talk later. <laughs> so, you conceived of this unusual idea. And then, here's the next part I find quite amazing. Convinced a lot of people it was a good idea. How did you guys come to, does anybody have something they'd like to share about how you came into the fold of this? I auditioned. I'm the only what? person to have auditioned. That's not true. <laughs> that is in the cast. Other people auditioned. Uh, yeah, I, they were, <laughs> it was the third show, the third month, and um, they were looking for a girl to come in, and they read a bunch of us, and, uh, and I nailed it. <laughs> 
and I've been their problem ever since. I had to audition too, but it was uh, lawn mowing and I had to paint a house. That's what they do, yeah, for the celebrity. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was weird. I'm sure there's some questions out here, burning questions in your heart, desires, someone needs to know. Does anyone have a microphone yet? Does anyone have a microphone? Here we are, right here. Why don't we, why don't we start right here? Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, this is kind of like just the standard, like, cliche question, but I'm just always curious about this for everyone. Since it's Nerd HQ and you guys have done the podcast and everything, I want to know what is, like, your biggest nerd passion? Like, are you, like heavy, like, I collect this comic book, or you're just heavy into a specific TV show, or, like, something like that. Like, I know we have a lot of brown coats here, so, you know, you've got the, you've got the crazy Firefly plan, so I just want to know, like, what is your, like, best passion? Let, let's start right here on the end with Annie. Oh, well, I, um, I married a supreme nerd, and... <laughs> Yeah, he's right there. And in <laughs> the Superman hat. Um, <laughs> Get him. He's a, I'm a general nerd, and he has helped me um, um, get more specific in the comic book and gaming world. I, one of our favorite, <laughs> so stupid, one of our favorite things to do is uh, I watch him play video games. Thank you. <laughs> Autumn? Um, yeah, same, same for me. I have, I have a geeky husband, and we are the people who dressed up for, um, for Lord of the Rings when it, when it came out. Like, we were literally the only people at the theater dressed like elves. I'm proud of it, damn it. Uh, I also have a nerd geek husband who is <laughs> sitting right over here. No, my big, like, my biggest nerd, nerd thing is, uh, uh, oddly, American presidential history. That's my, that is my serious nerddom. I will, I will read an encyclopedia about Franklin Pierce. I will, I will rock and roll that shit. Why are you making eye contact with me? Because you should start talking. Is that a challenge? Listen. I don't know about presidents. You win. Bring it. Congratulations. President fight. Congratulations. That's how presidents fight. Yeah. Capoeira. <laughs> At Disneyland. They do this every four years. Um, I grew up in a, in a nerd household. My dad is right there taking pictures. Hey. Yeah. Hi, Bill. Uh, so I like uh, Star Wars, comic books, sci-fi, fantasy, most television and movies, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Marvel or DC? Uh, I was uh, DC when I was a kid, and then uh, Marvel when I grew up. Yeah. And you put away childish well, things and became a man. I appreciate everything. <laughs> yeah, my bar mitzvah, I had to switch to Spider-Man. That's what they, it's Jewish law. Over to me, oh my God. After that, I'm obsessed with Orphan Black right now. I just, I feel like I was, I, was, I honestly, I don't know how she didn't get nominated for an Emmy. It seems insane. Can, you, uh, can someone get her for our show, please? Yeah, so whoever that, yeah, God's please sake. put her in touch. We'll do it. I guess Deadwood? I'll watch Deadwood. Oh, yeah, that's over good. Over yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm rewatching it now. It's, it's better this time. It still doesn't have an ending, you know? It just ends in the middle. Sorry. Spoiler. <laughs> oh, and I write a, a show every month where a robot fights a cowboy. Oh, no, no. Uh, so. Um. Crossword puzzles. Speaking as the actual Paul F. Tompkins, my passions are my mustache, fancy, fancy clothing, and the many, many bow ties of Mark Evan Jackson. As Paul Saboran, substitute Paul F. Tompkins, I am a ridiculous nut for uh, Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra. I, um, I can lose an entire day if anything Stargate SG-1 is playing. Yeah. I've never said that out loud before. We still love you. Um, I can't really compete with this nerd stuff, but I, um, I wrote, You're uh, wrong. wrote a song called uh, Don't Whiz on the Electric Fence for uh, Ren and Stimpy, if that qualifies. 
And I also, um, I, I TiVo Antique Roadshow. This is like the worst confessional of all time. And <laughs> after a bubble bath. I feel like I'm learning way too much about all of you. It's been eight years and I don't want to know this. Um, you know, ben, ben and I always talk about, like, we, we learn to write uh, by watching The West Wing and Buffy, and, like, these are the things that still get me excited. Nice. Mark? No, sorry, not Mark. 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 You want to get the next question? Sure. Uh, do you raise mics? What's happening? Yeah. Who's got a mic? Who's got a Who's mic? Who's got a mic in their hand? Is there a mic? Is there a mic? Who's Who's got a mic? Who has Good. a question? Who's got a mic? A oh, right. I have a question. May I? Is this all right? <laughs> yes, you in the blue. I'll allow it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. When do you know you're doing something right with a project like this? Your first audience could not have been a huge audience. It had to be friends and family. Yes? No? Yes? No? No? Yes? Were yes. you there? <laughs> yes, you were there. Okay, good. You're rocking that shirt, by the way. I'm going to tell you right now. I love that shirt. When did, when did you consider this a success? The comic book? Two days ago, Came right? out yesterday. Two days ago? <laughs> Premiered yesterday. No, uh, I, I'm curious about this from, from the cast, actually. I, I can uh, just say that I know that it, uh, at first we were having to beg people to come, and as you suggest... We it, never begged people to come. <laughs> we begged people to come, and... Uh, <laughs> And early on, because it, as you say, it's, a, it's an interesting conceit. You have to say like, oh, it's kind of like an old time. Uh, I say to a lot of people, it's like if uh, Garrison Keillor's Prairie Home Companion were cool. Um, <laughs> which takes time to process. Like, um, but it wasn't very few months, it was only a few months in before um, people were like, hey, I'm, I might come to your show on Saturday. And we were like, not unless you have a ticket. Like it, yeah, M-Bar is the place that we started it. I think it was 88 seats. Yeah, something like that. And. Um, are you counting the ones on the stage when we put people That's true. on the stage? It was, it's a very small place, and we would sell it out very quickly. I feel like there's, uh, around that time, there was that shift of, I mean, I've done, and I'm sure all of us have done a million shows where you're trying to get your buddies in, you've got four people in the audience, you're like, dude, come see my show, I promise it's going to be awesome, come see the show, come see the show. And there was that shift very early on where it stopped being us going to people and asking them to come see it, and people coming to us saying, can you get me tickets? which was kind of an awesome uh, transition. Yeah. For, for me and Blacker, I want to say that um, uh, writing the show, you don't know at, at the start if it's any good, if, it, if, it, if it's working, and then uh, to get the caliber of actors that we have coming back, like these people will not do a show that they're not totally convinced is a good show, and these people are fantastic. So having them come back every month, having a, a, a cra Craig, and having a Paul, yeah. Tom, a Paul F. Tompkins, you know, having the people on this stage, like, coming back. You're wonderful, sir. Uh, that's, that's what told me we were doing it right. I feel like it was when the audience started doing the POW and the Sparks Nevada thing. Yeah. Without being asked to. They just did it. Yeah, and the show has gone through so many changes since the first inception. Like, we did... Sparks Nevada, we broke for a musical act, so we had to change the set, and then we had a, a magician on, because it's a have whole, a radio magician. Yeah, it was a radio magician, so he would explain his tricks, and I mean, we had, we had all these, <laughs> it was funny. Do you remember his He's name? No magician. dumber than uh, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Yeah, right? Do you, you remember Ooh. the magician's name, anybody? Derek yeah. Hughes. Oh, Pres Pres oh Pres Prescott. Oh, Pres Prescott. Professor of Prestidigitation. Preeminent professor of Prestidigitation. Sorry, I forgot a word. Dummy. President fight. <laughs> Show them your shirt. Show them your By shirt. By the way, this is my house shirt. He can't shirt. fight me. He has my he face has on, on his belly. <laughs> You've lost. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. One. Paul F. Tompkins. Paul F. Tompkins is you back. Jack Nicholson's here. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Hi, I'm Mark. Hi, all my buddies. <laughs> Catchphrase. We're going to have to back up a little bit. Paul missed a couple questions. <laughs> Paul, you're a geek because what do you geek out about? What do you nerd out about? Man, I guess... Um... <laughs> just just you... brief, just briefly. Oh, sure. Um... You know what? You've said enough. In the days... <laughs> Please go. Now, Please. Nathan, how long have you been moderating? You must be exhausted. <laughs> Please, continue. 
<laughs> I guess I nerd out about um, justice. Um, <laughs> love. <laughs> Paul, Mark, Paul. Mark said Stargate. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> right? Specifically SG-1. <laughs> You don't want to long... hear about that Atlantis bullshit, right? <laughs> Correct. That jumped the shark. Whatever happened, maybe you can answer this question. Whatever happened to Jay Davidson? I don't know who that is. I'm glad you Ryan asked. Game guy? <laughs> yes, he was, in, he was in the Stargate movie. Oh, right, 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 right. He was... Sure, big fan. <laughs> well, if you were a fan, you would realize that they blew him up at the end of the movie, so he must be dead. Oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, Stargate's Jay Davidson. <laughs> I don't know if you notice, we hate hanging out together. <laughs> it's the worst. Are there questions? Back to the, oh, did someone, I'm, I'm, yeah, please, please oh, People brought their own microphones. This is very, <laughs> very handy. I know this works. Oh, it does, oh, okay. Ah, yeah. uh, by the way, hi. Hi, uh, hi. I just Hello. saw the show live for the first time last night. It was really cool. Um, but I just wanted to know Thank if, you. <laughs> if you guys could uh, play any characters besides the ones you do or be in any segments than the ones you normally are, what would they be? <laughs> what? Why Good did question. you get so this excited about that? <laughs> we're, we're out of material. <laughs> God, I don't know. <laughs> I'll start because I'm on the end. Um, well, I, I'll say that I did play a character that I would like to see come back <clears throat> that I'd forgotten Ooh. about. Um, in a Colonel TikTok, I think it was, where I played Kitty Hawk, who was uh, in love with both of the Wright brothers. <laughs> and she had an accent like this, and it was one of my favorite lines, a dinosaur, it's a Colonel TikTok, so a dinosaur shows up during, uh, while the Wright brothers are at dinner. And um, one of my favorite lines I got to say for that character was, uh, a don, a what? A what a song? <laughs> so the thing is, they can, I mean, you know, Kitty Hawk's not a person. So anything goes. <laughs> I feel like I ask every month if I can play an adventure kateer, just because I love that line in the laser beam theme, so theme song, with the help of the adventure kateers. I just want to say that line. The answer is still no, no. <laughs> Uh, I have, for eight years, played a sidekick. Uh, it's my goal within the next year. Uh, I will be Sparks Nevada, Marshall on Mars. I mean, Croach the Tracker, Marshall on Mars. Neither, no. <laughs> yes, sir. Dream big, buddy. Uh, well, I get to sort of play around in all of the segments, but it would be fun to... It's always fun to get to mix it up in Sparks. I don't do a lot of characters in Sparks, and that's always fun, so I guess I will say that. Aaron, you don't do a lot in the show. <laughs> what do you want to do? I'm just happy to... Uh, thank you. Uh, just to be on stage. I keep asking. They won't let me do it. I don't know. This year? Do you want to write it and we'll direct it? Yeah, let's do that. Let's switch roles. Yeah, I'm in. Good. Let's do it. I wouldn't mind seeing Dr. Vitus Brunholt come back, who's the original villain from the first Jefferson Reed. He did die, but... Uh, that has never but, stopped us before. You know, yeah, his, I think we did another one where his brain had been preserved or whatever, so yeah, I, uh, any, any Nazis I'm always happy to do. <laughs> you, you want to elaborate? Oh, I hope there's plenty of camera phone footage of that little sound fight. <laughs> I love Nazis. <laughs> what, the uniform, or what do you like about them? <laughs> Just their beliefs and... Uh... <laughs> I need you to say with, the, with more of the question than the answer. Just say, I like Nazis because. I also want to uh, say, with the help of Avenging Tears, so... <laughs> Uniforms are... Um, I got to, uh, I, always, I always enjoy visiting the Sparks Nevada universe. Um, and I, I got to play, I got to play Felton one time when Craig 
It was, it was your wedding, right? You had to, the, you left your wedding the next day. We were doing two shows that night, and Craig did, as usual, did Felton the first show, and I got to do it the second show. And I, instead of just doing what you would do, I did, um, I did it as uh, the character of E.B. Farnham from uh, Deadwood. I'm like, Marshall, hey, Marshall, there's a problem with the with murder man from Mars. <laughs> And it was so much fun, I didn't want to stop doing it. <laughs> like, that guy must love just walking around all the time. I, um, I would love to... Uh, I have an Adventure Kateer character, and I wish he were uh, in every single episode of, uh, of Captain Laser Boom, because it's, uh, it's a good time. Do it. Do, do it. it. He talks like this. <laughs> but Captain Laser Beam. <laughs> But Kevin Laserbeam, what would we do without you, Kevin Laserbeam? That's, that's your real voice. That's right. That's Jackson's actual Rather than that affected deep voice he usually <laughs> does as a bit. Thank you, guys. Uh, I don't act in the show, but I would love to see uh, more Yumbo. Oh, Yumbo, the cream of celebrity. Love to see Yumbo meet up with Beansy, who is. Uh, I don't know if people remember Beansy. Yeah, 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 that is cut. a deep cut. That's a deep cut. Okay, hardcore fans, look out for Beansy. Paul, what? Do I even oh. count? Uh, I would love for there to be another musical episode, and I would love to be. I'm pitching this, I guess, right now. I would love for it to be a uh, Beyond Belief episode sort of a, a Buffy once more with feeling thing yeah. where suddenly everybody has to burst into song, <laughs> mainly because I want to see more Paul F. Tompkins singing on stage. <laughs> and I would like to be the demon that causes it. <laughs> oh. Wow. Uh, I would love that. I, I would also love to guide Paget through the uh, terror of that at first. <laughs> she will, it, it, Paget greets everything with, that's impossible. We will never be able to do that. <laughs> And then by the end of it, it's like, we should do that again. We should do it again. She, she still comes to me like almost every month and is like, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I'm glad we moved to Largo. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you were right. You guys were right. I don't know how the show's going to survive uh, without people <laughs> clinking knives on plates of food that they didn't want to order. Brings up an interesting point. Where did you start doing Thrilling Adventure? And when, at what point did you have to, we, we need a bigger venue. What point, when, when did that happen? Uh, we moved about a year after we needed a bigger venue. <laughs> so you started? We started at Enbar, M Bar, which is a 100-seat supper club. Uh, it was a great venue for a show starting out. Uh, you know, we got our audience there. Uh, and then, uh, really, uh, thanks to Paul in large part because of his relationship with Largo, uh, he kind of... You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, they, they accepted us, and, um, and I was thinking about this, actually, about your question about when we knew the show had kind of taken off. There were these watershed moments, and, like, about four years into our M-Bar run, it felt like we had outgrown it. And then um, a few months into our Largo run, uh, honestly, the first time you did the show, Nathan, was when this audience... <laughs> who we knew would like our show were able to find our show because of you. So, thank you. Please. You know who actually sent me an email was, uh, because you're talking about how you get actors to your show, uh, your reputation precedes you. It was Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> Very short email. He said, thrilling adventure, hour. You're going to want to do this. <laughs> that was it. And then, there we go. Does someone else have a microphone out there? Good, because I want to ask more questions. <laughs> And the following questions, if you don't mind, I hate doing this dance monkey dance, but will you answer in character? You may choose a character. It could be someone else's character, except for mine. Question is, what's next for the Thrilling Adventure Hour? Right now you have a comic book out. Comic book's out. Next, you're doing a Kickstarter thing, I believe, for some kind of... The, the, we did the Kickstarter last year, which funded... In character. Book, in character. A web series. Boo! Sparks of Do you Sparks of I'm being Acker. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's fair. Nice, nice. Uh, the web series is well on its way. We screened a teaser at our Comic-Con panel, um, and you guys liked it, right? It looked good. Yeah, they hadn't seen it before. That was fun. Um, 
And uh, the concert film will be shooting on October 6th uh, of this year. Uh, those, are the, those are the big things funded by the Kickstarter. Some of you dress in character. I, I, I watched the evolution of the King of Coffee go from <laughs> whatever you threw on that day to a proper crown. That, that thing is, if I may say, majestic. Uh, I really paint In character, please. In... Oh. <laughs> Good catch. Heavy hangs the head that wears the crown of coffee. <laughs> Wouldst my mane of hair be enough to project my regal elegance, but alas, base metals must do. Don't look at me. Uh, so, how, how do you decide when to dress up and which character you're going to dress up as? Well, if you're Autumn Racer, the answer is always. Yes, <laughs> which I really appreciate, by the way. Yeah, and mostly hats. Mostly hats. <laughs> Paget also. Paget's not here today. Where is she? And on her way. On Lovely. Her way. She dresses up. Mm -hmm. She's got some outfits, that lady. She came in jawed furs a couple times. Like, yeah, she's real for real. She is an eBay junkie. At, like, seriously, she finds the most amazing stuff. Mostly, I'm just pilfering from her stuff. Yeah, so the uh, Amelia Earhart hat Like, literally, I think I've hat, worn right? three, her goggles. Yeah, I've her worn goggles. three pairs of her goggles, and I'm sorry, Badgett, but I've lost them all. <laughs> oh. Is she watching it? Terrible. Home? She's not she's watching. watching. She's not watching. She'll never know. She'll never know. She forgets. She you guys know. don't say anything about the goggles. Say anything. Right? It's our secret. Our little secret, you guys. Internet. Shh. <laughs> uh, uh, I gotta give I gotta give Philly in credit because I rarely uh, dress in any costume other than just a suit for the show. But uh, I have a friend of mine uh, named Dan Gilbert who's a brilliant makeup artist, and uh, he came to me one time and he said, "Hey, I want to create a makeup for Croach." Uh, and I said, sure. And then I asked the Benz if I could wear it in the show. And, uh, and they're like, yeah, sure, you can wear it in the show. So I went to his place and we did the whole, like, it took like three days. We did a test. He molded my head. We did the whole thing. Uh, and it was the night that It took three days to put the makeup on? No, no, no. You, it... sir, are dedicated. <laughs> I sat in that chair like this for three days. No, and then when it, uh, and it looked great. Uh, and when it came time to take it off, we're backstage and Fillion's back there. He's like, oh, you got to get this off before, uh, before the end of the show? Great, give me, a, give me a brush. Let's do this. So Fillion is back there taking my alien makeup off of my head, which you can see on your uh, Castle Season 4 DVD. Yes, we it's, had some uh, Castle people come do some backup, some back behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, they were doing a behind the scenes thing there that day that I happened to be wearing the makeup. But that was very nice of you to help me get out of that so I could get back on stage. I've been there, man. You know, you feel it. <laughs> You feel it. Molly Quinn has also come and, and joined your cast on more than one occasion. She'll be in tonight's show. She's in show. tonight. Where is the show tonight? When is the show tonight? Tonight we are doing two shows, 7 and 9 and 30, at the Horton Grand Theater. Um, and they're sold out. Sorry, guys. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 I knew you were successful when I couldn't get tickets. <laughs> Sorry. I had to get Mark to sleep me in the back door. <laughs> um, you're you're but, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I remember Colin Hanks did the show a couple times, and he was saying backstage at one point, uh, yeah, I had to buy my wife a ticket. They couldn't even, there was no comps, there was no, like, we had to work something out and get a ticket for her, and just, it's crazy. It's, you know, you guys are great to us. <laughs> a very entertaining show. I love... Every, all, all the Lazzi, all the stuff in between, the expressions, the, the, the shared looks, um, I gotta say, when I'm listening to the podcast, uh, I hear people laughing, but I don't know what they're laughing about. It seems to me, I, I certainly do enjoy the podcast, but the experience on stage seems to me to be the, that's the core, that's the, I, that's the, I, I, would, I wouldn't want to miss it. I always feel bad about that stuff, always, but it's, it's hard to be in front of an audience and not do some mugs here or there. And especially when it's people that you love playing with, it's very difficult not to get, if somebody, because if somebody start, all somebody has to do is start it. And if somebody starts it, someone else will immediately join in. It's not like the other person will deny and be like, guys, no, we got to think of the podcast audience. <laughs> we did a little last night. We had a little stare down during Moonshine <laughs> Holiday. It was really, really fun, yeah. What was the thing in New York, 
we did we Bobby, did nodding at each other. Mark and I did at nodding at each other, like a sort of good Works day great. nod. Works great on podcasts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how long? For like five minutes? Yeah, we just kept <laughs> nodding at each other. And then everybody just started nodding at everybody on the stage. Yeah, you we, guys were all playing, uh, we were all dolls or something? Yeah. yeah, Robbie the Roughhouser. Robbie the Roughhouser. Robbie the Roughhouser, and it was like 20 dudes on stage doing the exact same voice <laughs> and nodding to each other. I got to say, though, I kind of like the, the stuff that the, isn't for the podcast that you, that you can only get on the stage. Um, a, because I think it's great that there's stuff that, you know, for our audience of uh, a few hundred that come to see the show live, they get that extra thing. And also, um, I mean, radio is a, a medium for the imagination, so... You just assume that something funny is happening because you hear an audience. And you're like, <laughs> I'm gonna, in something my brain, funny this that is you what can't they did. see is going on. Yeah, <laughs> something funny happened here, so I'm gonna think of something funny, and all these people are laughing at it on my radio. And and this is also why we want to do the concert film. Is you know there are people who are never going to get to see us live as much as we're not as long as I have breath in my body. <laughs> I, we'll, we'll bring out the list later, but there's a list of people who will not never see list. this show live. It's a, it's a short list, but they know some why. Uh, as much as we're trying to travel with the show and we're going back to New York in October, um, you know, there are people who just can't get to them. Uh, so the concert film will hopefully give people a taste of what the live show is like. Is this something that people will be able to get on, uh, on the uh, interweb? We don't know. Uh, we're figuring it out. If you backed our Kickstarter and bought it, you will absolutely get a copy of the DVD, which will be loaded with extra stuff. Um, and then we're going to talk about distribution for the concert film. So uh, certainly there is going to be a DVD. How, how, how do I get my hands on? Do I have to write to the Largo? I'm I'll sorry. sneak you in the back door. Did you? Buddy, you're with me, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Friends Colin? of show will get them. Yeah. Colin Hanks' wife has to buy one. <laughs> she well, she's that. on that list. She knows what she did. <laughs> uh, did sorry, I'm, I'm, I don't want to monopolize. Is there, is there, there's a lovely question right over here. First, uh, Paul, can you uh, give me the name of your uh, South American tailor? Because that is uh, a radiant suit. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and uh, a question for uh, the panel is, uh, which uh, guests have you had that you're like, man, I'm, you know, no way did I think that we'd be able to get this guy and, you know, or person, and they showed up, and you're like, oh, I'm so, you know, like, giddy on the inside that they uh, agreed to come. Weird Al. Yeah, Weird Every, Al when, when Weird Al did the show, everyone backstage turned into a, their 13-year-old selves. It was <laughs> amazing. Which is his target demographic. <laughs> yeah. He uh, still looks exactly the same, this though. Is, that's it's not right, like no. you're looking into his eyes trying to find Weird Al Yankovic. No. There yeah. he is. He's got yeah. an accordion in a home that's aging rapidly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, <laughs> The only other person that I couldn't speak to, I couldn't talk to Weird Al or make eye contact with him. Uh, because he won't allow it. Yeah, he won't allow it. Weird. He Weird. punched me in the face. And, uh, <laughs> and the other was Billy West, because I'm a huge yeah. fan of the voiceover industry, and I've followed him since I was a kid. Yeah, did somebody just baba booey this panel? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Very nice. Stern rules. Uh, so, yeah. One of the, uh, one, I think it was the first time that Weird Al did our show, and um, I was talking to Hal in the wings during rehearsal uh, earlier in the show, and I think Aaron came up to, uh, to Hal, and Hal was in the middle of telling a story, and Aaron was like, uh, hey, Hal, would you, um, for this opening number that Weird Al's doing, would you uh, go sing back up with him? And, and Hal turned to me and went... <laughs> like... And he, I mean, and he, I took video of it. I, I, uh, I should send it to you. Because you, you were behind him uh, at, at the Hal mic, what we call the Hal mic. Uh, and he was singing, and it was uh, Annie and Hal eventually, wasn't it? And both these two were behind it, Weird Al going like. <laughs> Couldn't believe they had that chance to sing with, with I've Weird never Al. been so nervous to sing in my life. Yeah. Standing behind Weird Al. I did, I did a harmony with him, and he turned afterwards, after he finished running through it, and like smiled at me, like, oh, that was a good harmony. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Done. Um, one of the answers to your question uh, is uh, Nathan Fillion. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. That was, uh, that was a right, seminal moment in the, uh, in the show. Zach Levi. And, and uh, one. the... Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another funny story, I am, uh, there are things I don't, I'm not caught up on in the geek world, and uh, a few months ago we had a, uh, Stargate SG-1 asked me anything. 
Uh, uh, but a few months ago, we were at a rehearsal and I met a nice Scottish woman uh, who was coming to play with us. And uh, you, you met her, you didn't know she was gonna come play with us. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I had no idea who she was. I thought maybe she was a Kickstarter backer. So did I! <laughs> oh my so God. So did I! Yeah. Oh my God. It was Honestly, Karen that... Gillan. Karen <laughs> Gillan. So she, uh, she came out, I think it was a TikTok? Was it a TikTok? It was TikTok. She came out on stage and the audience lost their mind. And I, and I, was, I was like, she is a popular Kickstarter back then. <laughs> you still, you still didn't know? But tell, uh, Gags, tell the story of what she asked you later, because uh, Weird Al was, in the... was there uh, in the same show. She... What? I don't remember this. So uh, it, Weird Al, I... and... Weird Al and Karen were in the same show. Oh, she was super nerding out about Weird Al. Oh, I oh, thought she... no, no, no. She... Said, no who's oh, wait, wait. Weird Al. Yeah, she had no idea. She had no idea who Weird Al was. She's too young and Scottish. <laughs> I don't know. I drink a lot of scotch backstage. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Nazis. <laughs> Right here, please. Hi. Um, as one of those people who has not yet been fortunate enough to see the live show, all I know about the commercials um, are the few clips that you've released on your podcast. So besides Patriot Brand Cigarettes and Work Juice Coffee, have there been any other products that you have done or that you hope to do in the future? Yeah, all Work Juice, there have been a few different Work Juice Products, right? There's spin-offs of Work Juice. Yeah. And Patriot. And Patriot. Patriot. Patriot Elites. And a lot of those, uh, I will say this, because and, uh, and Ben has a real answer to your question, but uh, in the comic book, uh, the design was uh, done by, what's his name, Scott yeah. Newman? Yes. Uh, and he, like, incorporated a bunch of the ads that we do in the show, and it looks amazing. Like, it's so cool, and it feels like it's part of that world still. But the other ads we did. Uh, we have done ads for a mother's brand milk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the creepiest <laughs> ad. I forgot about that. So gross. Uh, so gross. Take, take a and, cake and break. And sweetie pie, sweetie pie cakes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, take a cake break. Sweetie pie cakes. Uh, That's my favorite. The actually. notion that uh, so in, in lieu of a cigarette uh, in the afternoon, go eat an entire cake. <laughs> take a cake break. <laughs> I will say one of my favorite things uh, ever in the show was one of the commercials, which was the Supreme Court. Yeah. It was. Yeah, so uh, I think we were. Leaked, it was. Right? Yeah. That, I think that one went out on a. Yeah, that one went out on a podcast. Uh, it was Patriot brand cigarettes. Yeah. It was. It was uh, my first day on the Supreme Court, and I was real nervous. <laughs> but the line, well, they called a recess, and we all went outside. I was like that line. <laughs> that is so dumb. Fun. Hey, uh, laugh. new guy. What's your name? Simon. Welcome to the Supreme Court, Simon. Uh, it really excites my heart even now to hear you say that. <laughs> the first ad tonight is a King of Coffee ad. I think it's really funny. I'm yeah, excited yeah. to do it. Uh, I, I love personal favorite for me is the, is the Philadelphia story. Uh, yes. yes. Paul and I are both from Philadelphia. So it's Benjamin Franklin and a young Paige. Um, and I, I don't even remember. He's like, he's signing me a Declaration of Independence. And That's right. We yeah. got to do our real voices. Two of us doing horrible Philadelphia accents. Yeah, it's me, it's Benjamin Franklin. Franklin. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over here by this great big bell. You just put a crack in that bell, you dumby. You, you just mean I improved it. <laughs> They're the worst. I can't get through it. I can't get through that because it... <laughs> we, no, we never got through that without laughing. No, never. never. We touched on it a couple times, I just want to be specific. So the Kickstarter, one of the things was the comic book. Yes. It went on sale when? It was previewed here at Comic-Con. Uh, right. And I think the Archaea booth still has some, and we definitely have a bunch at the Horton Grand Theater. So if you're coming to the show, you can pick it up there. W where's the Archaea booth? Archaea booth, uh, Archaea Boom the booth is number 2229. 2229, yeah. which on your phone spells baby. <laughs> Aww. He knows that off the top of his head, you guys. He does. I'm also a nerd for phone number uh, words. <laughs> That's my other nerd thing. Uh, and then it'll go out. You can pre-order it from Arkea right now from their website, arkea.com, and uh, it'll go out to the public in, I think, the end of August. Late it's August, available. yeah. And we're, listen, Kickstarter backers, we want to get it to you. Karen Gillan, listen. <laughs> there are 2,000. <laughs> you still don't know. <laughs> he doesn't know. You won't know. He, he refuses know. to know. He knows here. 
Uh, there are 2,000 books to ship out, and we're going to get them all out to you in, in August and September. Um, and it's like the crazy artwork that Hal and Mark did, and like all the photos and everything. We're, they're all getting shipped together. There's, so there's also there's, there's a, an issue of Thrilling Adventure on online, yes, digital, you get, uh, like on Comixology. It's a digital, digital preview. Digital preview. Yes, it's two stories. It's two stories. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. No, no, no. What? Do you know which stories they are? Sparks, Sparks Nevada. Nevada is one. <laughs> and uh, Philip Fathom. Philip Fathom. Fathom. Is the other. Is the other one. So <laughs> there's also a Colonel TikTok in there. Uh, uh, is there? Wow. Yeah, there is. I think it's free. <laughs> is there? There is. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so go to Comixology. You can get that. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, Hello. Oh, hey. Hi. Hi. Dude. Hi. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm really interested in voice acting, and I love it, and I wanted to know how you're you in the show. <laughs> Just that simple. Yep. Sorry, Hal. See you guys. <laughs> I want to know uh, how you guys come up with voices, and then do you guys have workshop sessions, and then when do you decide to stop changing it and that you, you've nailed the voice? And that, he that's thinks you guys doing. rehearse. <laughs> Adorable. You know, I run a workshop every weekend, and I run these guys through <laughs> some drills. And if we all want to try one right now, just... <sighs> um, it, is, it is a bit of a process. I mean, there, there, there are some voices that uh, come right away, and it's just, that's obviously it. There's times where I'll see something in a script that's outside of my typical characters that I will ask the, the guys, do you have something in mind for this? Is there a particular voice or style or something that you want? And then sometimes we'll try different things and see how that works. Um, Sometimes, sometimes it works very well. Sometimes it doesn't work quite as well as you would have hoped. Um, but yeah, it's 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 definitely an ongoing process. It either is there right away or it takes a, a couple tries to I get it. I feel like Paul, you're close to giving us Leffingwell, like you're this, the, the, how that voice came to be, uh, in our show. Oh uh, yes, um, <laughs> in the the uh, Sparks Nevada, I'm from Earth Day Special. I played a, uh, a, an omnipotent uh, alien <laughs> being named Kay, um, who <laughs> was sort of like every one of those characters from Star Trek that, uh, you know, wanted to have a world where they, pe human beings were, were his puppets, you know. And so the voice was this voice that I did. <laughs> there's, a, there's a history to this voice, which is I did it for Super Ego for a character named Martin Leffingwell, who's the owner of a supermarket. Before that, the voice was uh, a voice that I did at the very end of a sketch that I did with a friend of mine that was a Twilight Zone spoof where the, act, the, the, the acting was very grand and we talk like this and you have to understand the morality, you don't have the right, like that kind of thing. And then at the end, they give the moral in their own voices. And then my guy had a speech impediment. <laughs> I, like, I trust you've learned something from our tale of Right and wrong today. And, and to me, it was hilarious that why wouldn't that guy talk like that all the time if he could? So then I used it for Leffingwell, and then I used it for this, this guy who loves whimsy. You earth people are my meat puppets to do as I please. There's a lot of, um, like, we'll see character, uh, actors, actors do a bit in rehearsal or whatever. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and we'll, we'll put that bit in a thing. Uh, Mark Evan Jackson's Adventure Kateer came out of, yeah. I saw him do this character in an improv years before. I don't think he knew that I'd seen it. Uh, and we put him in. How does uh, that make you feel? <laughs> I remember you coming to me and going, uh, do your little kid voice. And I was like, I don't have a little kid voice. How dare you, sir. <laughs> and, uh, and you were like, yeah, you do. And I was like, do it. And you were like, and I was like, oh, that guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who you thought was an old man until I told you it was a little kid voice. <laughs> And frequently, uh, Akron Blacker will just uh, give us a, a impression of somebody to do, because even though the impression will be bad, it'll be an interesting voice. Like, we were doing something, and as I'm walking out on stage, I went, hey, who's this guy? And he goes, Robert Mitchum. I went, all right, and we went on stage. <laughs> and then, like, oh, do your Robert Mitchum, Ben Chapman. Okay, well, that was how that started, though. He ori originally, we did this uh, noir thing called Tales from the Black Lagoon. Uh, and, yeah, black Some lagoon. lagooners out there. Ah. Some lagooners. <laughs> Lagoonatics? Uh, lagoonies. Thanks, <laughs> uh, guys. 
and that was the first time he'd used Robert Mitchum. So it was a lot of talking like this, and, uh, and it was, but it was very noir, and I thought that was a little on the nose for noir. So I changed it, and I made him talk like this after that. And I was like, what's the exact opposite of what the film noir thing sounds like? So sometimes it's just, you know, screwing around with uh, different weird combinations of voice and tone. I start with my own voice. <laughs> The end. And stay there. <laughs> Full stop. And change it, not at all. As a, as a fan of the podcast, I have to say, I, as much as I love all of you, my favorite non-regular voice is Craig's adventure kateer, Kevin. Oh, yeah. Patrick, excuse me, Patrick. Kevin. We would never. <laughs> That's too contemporary a name. Can, can we hear a little bit of it? Um, Paul, you want to hear what it sounds like? Come laser beam, come laser beam. Oh, um, my dad's in prison. <laughs> what was the direction that we gave you that, you, that, that got you to that character? Well, I think I was doing more of a generic kid voice, and then after the first run, uh, Acker was like, um, fatter. Those, those are the notes that we get. It's yeah. fatter. The, uh, so Dor dumber. Dorothy Parker, the dumbest. <laughs> like, just these Wait. quick little... But what did I tell you last night about your, your moonshine character? You said, oh, what did you say? It it's was like Dorothy Parker, but not as dumb. Right. So there's a scale of dumbness. Yeah, it's like, and I, and I knew exactly what you wanted. Like, that's you the scariest it. It part. So funny. It was like, yes. Okay. Do you your Dorothy Parker? Get another microphone down here. Dorothy Parker smash! <laughs> Annie out. No, you good? They, right. just, they just get to about here, and then they go back to their chairs. Get it? Okay. Oh, there's a microphone. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. No. Wait, you don't want to pull that one off. It will blow up. Do we, have, do we have a question over here? Who's got a microphone? Who's got it? Kill please, time. Hold Talk on. about please, Nazis. Please it's rigged to blow. Hi, guys. Oh, hello. Hey. Hi. What's up? Um, I'm seeing the show tonight. I'm really excited. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, you are. Um, <laughs> it's, it's true. I am. Um, but I wanted to know, y'all started off in such a, an intimate setting and it kind of allowed creative juices to flow and, and, and maintain control of things. And as projects come down the pike and it, it, it gets bigger, is there a, is there a fear that uh, it might lose its face or lose its personality as it, as it becomes closer to the mainstream? And yeah, you guys don't have a lot of personality to go around. <laughs> Jackson? No. <laughs> no, I'll, I will say this. Um, you know... When we, and we've talked about this, but working with the artists on the comic book felt like the same kind of collaboration that we have with the actors on the stage show and is as rewarding. Uh, and with the director on the web series and uh, with the director on the concert film, like we're seeking out people that we know and we love their work. And, you know, so these collaborations are only great. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's been said uh, before I got here, but it is, it, I, I forget sometimes what a collaborative show it is. And we all talk together about it a lot. And it's uh, it's all about creativity and it's all about, it's just exciting and it's fun to do this uh, on a regular basis and to work with these people on a regular basis and find new things. And we're always looking for new things and we're always looking for, you know, uh, uh, new ways to go with stuff. And it's, it's, after all this time, it has not uh, ceased to be an exciting, fun thing that feels new every time. Like, it never feels like, eh, I don't want to do this one again or whatever. It's, it's, always, it's always fun, and I think it's, it's what keeps it fresh is that it is uh, uh, an open conversation uh, month after month after month. And it's, you know, it's, it's, I look forward to it like nothing else in my life, and uh, I'm very grateful to have this experience. I feel the same way. Yeah. Me too. 100%. <laughs> Uh, we do too. Eight more years. Eight more years. Eight more years. <laughs> and I feel like uh, the the rehearsals that we have also keep it uh, cool and intimate and small and fun. Because um, for eight years now, uh, Ben Blacker's wife Julie has been cooking and baking the most delicious treats for our rehearsals. That's and the Blacker, only Blacker to rehearse, bakes really, right? And Thank Blacker you, does Andy. as well. Oh, You're I just welcome. assume that Julie. Men can bake. <laughs> They both, they, they are both amazing. There's They're always good treats. They're both excellent bakers. 
Uh, yeah, there's always treats at rehearsal. Again, speaking as someone who just occasionally flies in, and I'm sure Nathan can speak to this too, uh, on top of everything else, I mean, it's very easy, having been together, what, eight years at this point, they could very easily just sort of be this closed clique and uh, someone trying to come in from the outside. It could be tough. And to a, to a person, it's all such a supportive, open, welcoming group. It is just such a blast. It is literally a treat uh, to come in and be a part of it. Uh, and I wish everyone could have that opportunity, but you can't. So it'll no. just, it's just going to be me. That's the other list. But I just, I genuinely, th thank you on behalf of all the, the, the guest artists. Because that's why they come back, I would think, because not only is the writing great, but you people are so great to work with. It's just incredible. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. That is true. As an outsider looking in, uh, my experience is that, you guys, it runs like clockwork. There's nothing that happens that you guys can't handle. Oh, yeah, no problem. Don't sweat it. You're overthinking it, Nathan. Don't worry. You guys are very kind. You're very welcoming. You run like clockwork. And I'm going to say, I had a moment when I was on stage my very first time. The work juice anthem, <laughs> it, I, I felt patriotic. <laughs> That's Andy. The music... Flawless for these for these shows. Thank you very much for doing that. How do you Spider wrangle those guys? How do what's that little process? Uh, Andy Paley. Well, I feel like uh, like Paul was saying. It's just it's really easy to do this. It's uh, the, even though the, it's getting more popular and it's getting bigger. It's like the process that I go through with these guys has not changed that much. It's just kind of like uh, they'll say we need a song about uh, this, that, or the other thing, and and I'll come up with something, show it to them, and then we kind of finish it off together, and, and I get uh, whatever musicians that they'll allow me to have, <laughs> and um, we rehearse as much as we can, and then we perform the songs, and uh, it seems to be working out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we... he gets musicians who come in like the morning of, have no idea what the show is, and, and they nail it like every time. The, the band is unbelievable. We would not be the show that we are if we didn't have Andy Paley and the Andy Paley yeah. Orchestra behind us. Agreed. And, and we should also add, as long as we're handing out uh, accolades, the reason the show runs like clockwork uh, is because of Aaron Ginsberg. Aaron Ginsberg. Yeah. Hey. I hold the watch. I hold the watch. Keep the clock going. Um, no, it's, I mean, obviously the cast is incredible, but like, I remember when I fir the first joined the show, which was a few months in, I can't remember exactly, and it was uh, this like giant bowl of talent that was just like a kind of a... It's a bit of a mess. A messy bowl of a talent. Messy, it's a awesome messy bowl. talent bowl. <laughs> Industry standard messy talent bowl. Messy talent. One of the problems I think maybe was the bar was like four feet from the stage, <laughs> right? At M bar. So it was very easy to like do a character and get a drink. <laughs> Miss those days. <laughs> Miss those days. The, no. The bartender, I should add. Uh, first name basis with everyone except Mr. Jackson. <laughs> yes. Jackson. You know what? We, we, were, uh, we were discussing the Mark Evan Jackson One Minute Mystery. Oh, yes. With car on the way over Which here. was like the, the, the drunk Jackson character who would come up on stage and he would have a minute mystery like a television. He would go through the whole thing and then just tell you like, you know, a woman arrives at the hospital and uh, her son is there. And she said, I can't operate on this person. It's my son. Turns out she was mistaken. And then... <laughs> It's a long story. It was incredible. Like, we missed, that was like an M bar, a what very M bar specific bit because you would see Marcus at the bar. You, <laughs> he's coming up on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would frequently acting. write outlines to scenes like that, which would be, if you need me, I'll be at the bar. Yes. <laughs> which. We was... did lines from the bar. Remember, you would, you, you would be yeah. standing at the bar doing. That's how close the, the bar was to the stage. <laughs> the, bar, the bartender kind of became a character. Yes, himself. absolutely. We had wittingly. Yeah. A line in the opening song. In the opening song, it was this here bartender's helping us pour over our lives. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Literally was a character. That song has been retired and never will come back. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> you guys have come a long way. Now you have to walk 20, 25 feet to get a drink. <laughs> There's doors. We have, well, we have interns now to get us drinks. Oh, it's, all, it's all backstage. It's all backstage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank the Thrilling Adventure Hour. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Nathan. And thanks to Nerd HQ. We thank you, Nathan. Guys. Thank you very much, folks. Stay seated. Our ushers will have you stand and leave in an orderly fashion. Awesome. Unless there's a fire, in which case, you, you know the plan. I think they want to do a group picture up here. Great, yeah. <laughs>